Hi, I'm Chris Sartorial. There are many videos out there demonstrating how to draft a woman's bodice sloper. Unfortunately, the good ones tend to be very complicated and hard to follow, even for professionals. Having worked many years as a pattern maker and technical designer in the apparel industry, I've developed many of my own methods. I thought you might like to see one of the procedures I use for drafting a fitted bodice from body measurements. Okay, to begin with, you'll need measurements. I'm using my dress form as a model. Some of you may say, oh no, that's cheating because it's not a real person, but perhaps soon I'll have uh, convinced one of my lady friends to uh, allow herself to be measured on camera. Until then, I'm going to use the form. I have dressed her uh, in a simple knit top that I made to fit the form. That way, at least it disguises the guidelines on the form so you won't uh, accuse me of using them uh, to make it easier. Anyway, the uh, measurements you'll need for this particular draft method, the first of them is going to be the back high point shoulder to waist measurement. And my form is measuring 17 and a half. Next you'll need the center back neck to waist measurement. In this case, 16 and a half. The front high point shoulder to waist measurement. I'm getting 17 and a half, which is the same as the back. That's because this is a very balanced dress form. Uh, on the average person, the front high point shoulder to waist measurement may be longer or shorter than the back. Especially if the woman is fuller busted, the front is going to measure longer than the back. Or if a woman is particularly small busted or with a uh, stooping posture, the front may be shorter than the back. We'll need the center front neck to waist. I'm getting 14 and a quarter. You'll need to lo locate the apex, the fullest part of the bust. You can measure the apex down from the high point shoulder, but for this particular draft method, it's best to measure up from the waist. So I'm going to find the fullest part of the bust and measure up from the waist. I'm getting seven and a half. And you'll need to locate or measure the distance between your apex points. So I'm getting about seven and a half inches. So now that I have the apex point, I'm going to need, I can measure the bust. And she's measuring 36 and a half inches. And the waist, you see I have a string tied around the waist to locate it, uh, position it properly. Waist is 28 and a half. We'll need to measure across the shoulders, which we always do from the back, because the human body is slightly wider across the back than it is across the front. I'm getting 15 inches. We'll see if I measure the same between the same two points across the front, I'm getting about 14 and a half. So always measure the across shoulder across the back if you want to be accurate. And I'm going to measure the shoulder seam length, which I'm getting five inches. And I'll also need to measure the shoulder slope. Now some drafting methods will tell you to measure from center front to your shoulder. I've never found that works properly for me. Um, I always usually end up with a shoulder slope that's not properly balanced front to back. What I prefer to do is take a straight edge ruler, line it up on the shoulder fairly parallel to the floor, and measure the height at the shoulder point. And I'm getting about one and three eighths inches. Okay, that does it for all the measurements we'll need. Let's start drafting. Before we draft, we'll need to add some ease to our bust and waist measurements. I'm going to add one and one half inches of ease to the bust, bringing it up to 38 inches, and one half inch of ease to the waist, bringing it up to 
29. Okay, in order to draft our pattern, of course, you'll need paper and a pen or pencil and a ruler. A see-through ruler like this one is ideal, but any ruler will do. It will also be helpful for you to have something to square from, like a triangle, or what many professional pattern makers use, an L square. I'm going to go ahead and use my ruler to square from because I've had a lot of practice doing it, and uh, it's another great reason to use a see-through ruler. An additional item you'll probably want to use is a French curve. I find that this particular shape is the best for drafting a woman's bodice. So if you can find one like this, by all means get it. Beginners especially tend to have difficulty with curves. After you've been drafting patterns for a while, you may find you no longer need it, but I'm definitely going to use it for this draft. Okay, so the first step we're going to do is to draw a line that is equal to our back high point shoulder to waist measurement. So I'm going to mark a point at the top of the line and then measure the distance, which is 17 and a half inches, and mark the point at the bottom, which will be my waist. Now I need to locate the fullest part of the bust, which is the bust apex location up from the waist. And according to my measurements, that's seven and a half inches. So I'm going to mark that and square line. Now I'm going to mark this line length equal to one quarter of my bust measurement. And because we are drafting the back bodice, I'm going to subtract a quarter inch, or about half a centimeter. Why am I doing this? Because typically a woman's woven garment is slightly wider across the front than it is across the back. That's standard for the garment industry. And you'll get a better fit if you do it. You can omit the step, but I advise that you do it. Now I'm going to square a line at the bottom for my waist. And I'm going to mark it equal to one quarter of my waist measurement. And just like the bodice, I'm going to subtract a quarter. But if I were to draw, as you can see, if I were to connect these two with a line to draw my side seam, this line is angled much too steeply for a woven garment. Maybe for a knit it would work, but not a woven. So I needed to uh, divert some of this fit from the side into a waist dart. I'm going to make my waist dart one and a quarter inches deep. That's kind of a mid-width. If you're the figure that you're making your sloper for is more curvaceous, say 10 inches or more uh, difference between the bust and the waist, I'd make the dart wider, deeper, more like one and a half inches or uh, four centimeters. If your figure is less curvaceous, uh, less of a difference between the bust and the waist, then you might want to make the dart smaller, like one inch or maybe two centimeters. But I'm going to do one and a quarter, kind of in the middle. So I'm going to take the point that I, that I drew here, and I'm going to move it out one and one quarter inches, the width or depth of my dart. And now I'm going to draw a line connecting those two points. And that is my side seam. So now I need to draft the waist dart. Now the location of the waist dart, I like to put the waist dart in the back in approximately the same location as it is in the front, the same distance from center back to dart as the front 
dart is going to be from center front. So to get that, I'm going to refer to my measurements for the distance between apex points, which was seven and a half inches, or half of that, three and three quarters. So I'm going to mark a point three and three quarters up from center back on my uh, bus line, and also at the waist, and draw a line straight down for the center of my dart. And since I said my dart is going to be one and a quarter inches deep, I'm going to mark a point half that width on either side of this line, so five eighths either side of the line. And now I'm going to connect these three points with lines. And there is my waist dart. Now we need to go up and, and address our shoulder and neck. I'm going to square a line at the top for our shoulder. Our across shoulder measurement was 15, so half of that is 7 and a half. And I'm going to square a short line down. Now I need to refer to our measurements for my shoulder slope, which should be 1 and three-eighths inches. So I'll measure down one and three-eighths inches and make a mark. Now my shoulder seam length, according to my measurements, should be five inches. So I'm going to place my ruler so that this five-inch uh, point on the ruler is at this mark. And I'm going to rotate the ruler until it meets the shoulder line. And draw a line between the two points. And there's my shoulder. Now what about the back neck? Now I'm going to measure up from the bottom, from the waist, the distance of my center back neck to waist, which is 16 and a half inches. And I'm going to square a line here, short one. And I'm going to take my French curve. draw a curved line there. Now we need to address the across back area. Now I typically like to measure the across back five inches below the high point shoulder. So I'm going to draw a line that's five inches down from my high point shoulder line square it. And I'm going to mark it at my shoulder width, which was seven and a half. And because we are slightly narrower across the back than we are across the shoulder, I'm going to measure in one quarter and draw a short line or half a centimeter to a full centimeter. And I'm going to take my French curve, and I'm going to connect this little line with my shoulder point using a very slight curve. And I'm going to move the French curve down farther and draw another more curved line. Now it looks like our back box is about finished, except if I were to cut this out and sew it up, I would find that I have extra fullness here in the upper part of the armhole. There would be a bubble of fabric or a sag here, which might be okay if this were a loosely fitted garment, but this is a fitted bodice, so I'm gonna to wanna to dart out that excess fullness. I'm gonna take about a half inch out. or about one and a half centimeters if you're in the trick. I'm going to measure a quarter inch above and below the across back line and make a mark there. 
Now I need to figure out how deep to make this dart. The easiest way to do that is to mark a point at the halfway point of your shoulder. My shoulder is five inches, so half of that is two and a half, and square a line from there to your cross back line. And here's where your dart should end. And I'm just going to connect these points with lines. And there's my dart. Later on, if you wish, you can rotate this dart into the shoulder. I prefer to leave it where it is, at least until after I fit this sloper, because if I have to go back and make some adjustment to my shoulder, making it wider or narrower, or raise or lower the shoulder slope, it's better if I don't have the dart in my way. So the, the pattern is pretty much finished. You may want to go ahead and true up your dart line down here. You can fold it in the traditional way, or I've had enough practice that I can just take my branch curve and just smooth it out. a little bit of a come down there. Okay, our back bodice is finished. The next video will be drafting the front. See you then.